Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Stephanie. I'm Tom. Hey, it's our issues unit. It's day two as well. We're talking about a topic that's、uh, in the news in Taiwan, and that's whether Taiwan should change their system that they use to judge defendants or people who have been charged with a crime. Currently, they're using a judge to decide if someone's guilty or not guilty. But they're talking about maybe changing their system to match a system that's used in 52 countries across the globe, including the U.S.、Uh, both Tom and I are Americans. So that、uh, change would mean actually offering a jury trial to some of these defendants. Twelve people who were selected、uh, randomly. Would be asked to judge the evidence they hear at a trial and decide whether someone's guilty or not guilty. So that would be a big change. We're going to talk about、uh, how your government is handling it currently. So we'll、uh, see what your president is saying as well. Uh, indeed. So, yeah, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to continue with this topic. So let's get to it. Let's read the entire contents of our lesson right now. Advocates of the jury system not only highlight its many virtues, but also consider the opportunity to take part in such an important legal process a privilege. They argue that having twelve jurors, each with a different perspective, reduces the chance of corruption and leads to a greater number of objective rulings. Former U.S. Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia even claimed that verdicts issued by the country's jury system. Have a 99.9 percent accuracy rate. Still, this system is not without its faults. Jurors have no obligation to reach a verdict based on facts, and personal biases can lead to wrongful decisions. In fact, 12 percent of capital convictions are later proven to be inaccurate. Moreover, completing jury duty can be financially difficult for jurors. In the U.S. These individuals may receive as little as four U.S. dollars per day, and companies aren't required to pay employees who miss work for this civic duty. Jurors especially suffer from the lack of an income when trials last for extended periods of time. Whereas a judge might deliver a verdict within a few days, sometimes juries take weeks to reach a collective decision, since they must continue their discussions. Until all twelve of them have reached an agreement, in Taiwan, the Tsai administration has argued that unqualified citizens shouldn't be tasked with such a critical job. Still, with growing discontent over its current court process, President Tsai has responded with plans for the island to adopt a lay judge system. This would involve appointing six citizens to act as lay judges. Who help three professional judges reach a verdict? It will be an unprecedented move for the nation, and also seems to mark a compromise between Taiwan's existing system and the jury trials many have been pushing for. Okay, guys, let's dive in.、Uh, advocates of the jury system. If you're an advocate for something or someone, it means you're for them. You're somebody who supports a particular side or position. So, people who are pro jury system, you could say, "Oh, I'm pro jury system."、Uh, says they not only highlight its many virtues. But also consider the opportunity to take part in such an important legal process a privilege. I think a lot of the jurors, at least in the states, who have served on juries, feel like it was a privilege, a great responsibility, something they took very seriously. If you're deciding someone's life, whether it's a year in prison, which can change someone's life, or you know. Life in prison—it's a big deal. So when you talk about someone's virtues, it's just their good points.、Um, you know, the virtues of a system would mean 
the good positive benefits of that particular system. When you say virtues, you're never talking about negative things. It's always good, high moral values you're talking about. If you're virtuous, or someone's described as being virtuous, it means they have really good, high moral standards. They're good people.、Um, and again, privilege is something that. People consider to be an honor.、Uh, maybe not everybody gets to do it,、uh, but it's definitely a special right. It's an advantage. It's something that people feel a great honor to participate in or to do. I think that、uh, it's a privilege to be able to go to college and get a good education. Not everybody gets that chance. Uh, indeed, and、uh, of course, when I was a kid, they always said, "Hey, don't think that driving is a right; it's a privilege." Right. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> if you screw up, if you get caught too often speeding or parking double or whatever, right, then you can lose that privilege, and then you're going to have to walk or ride a bicycle or、yep. something like that. Parents love that one, don't they? They love that、uh, argument. They always say that, indeed. <laughs> But here, the first sentence is basically saying that people who support the jury system say that. Hey, juries are good, but also it's a privilege to be a juror if you get that chance. So that's why they like juries. It's good. The jury is good. And then if you get to be part of the jury, hey, that's a privilege. It's a special right. It's、uh, something that not everybody experiences here. And they argue that having twelve jurors, each with a different perspective, reduces the chance of corruption and leads to a greater number of objective. Rulings. So, of course, there have been cases in the past where an innocent man was found guilty of a crime and later put to death. I think there was such a case here in Taiwan a number of years ago, and I think it was just a single judge who decided, and、uh, they were under pressure to find somebody guilty of this crime. So they just、uh, found basically just some guy and said, "Hey, you did it because you were at this certain place." He was later found innocent, of course. If they had a jury. With other people there, they would have had different perspectives, and they would have thought, "Hey, wait a minute. Okay, those guys are just trying to find a scapegoat. Okay, they're just trying to get somebody guilty. That's not right." So yeah,、uh, that's one、uh, advantage to a jury system. They have twelve different people who can catch those little problems. Well, that's a good thing about、uh, part of the U.S. system is if you are convicted, your attorney can turn around and appeal. He could say, "I don't like the verdict," and take it to another level of judges. And if you are given the death penalty, you then have time to keep appealing. For maybe fifteen, sometimes fifteen years. So yeah, it's horrible when innocent people are paying for crimes when they're innocent. Here it says the people who like this idea of a jury system, they like that there are twelve jurors, and they can each have a different perspective or viewpoint, and this reduces the chances of them being corrupt. Or at least the whole system being corrupt, and leads to a greater number of objective rulings. Objective just means something based on your personal opinion or feelings. Someone who's not really open-minded would be more subjective or biased, or they have some sort of prejudice against something or someone. A ruling is a word we use in trials, especially. It's just a decision that is announced. Usually, a judge has a ruling, and they say, you know, what they think、um, is right or wrong. So during a court trial, you'll see the attorneys presenting evidence, and sometimes you'll hear objection by one of the attorneys. They don't like what the other side has said, and then the judge, his job or her job, is to decide. Whether to rule, yes, that was unfair, which means they have to take that out of the court trial, or no, what they said was okay. So it's very interesting. If you want to learn more about at least U.S. or American law, you should watch some TV shows or some movies. 
Some of them are close. They're not all accurate, of course, because it has to be drama and very exciting. So we've got former U.S. Supreme Court justice.、Uh, we've got the Supreme Court, which is composed or comprised of nine judges. Antonin Scalia passed away a few years ago. He claimed that verdicts issued by a country's jury system have a 99.9 percent accuracy rate. I don't think he was talking about all jury trials. Trials.、Uh, that number is lower, of course, we know, but in some、uh, specific areas, it is quite accurate. Well, still, the system is not without its faults, faults or problems, or things that aren't so great. The negative parts of the jury system. We're going to explore those now. Ah,、uh, yes.、Yeah, so、let's talk about some of those here.、Uh, so here's、uh, one of the faults here, or one of the problems.、Uh, jurors have no obligation to reach a verdict based on facts, and personal biases can lead to wrongful decisions. So yeah, I think this is basically saying that jurors can be people from society with no real training. So they basically can make their decisions based on a gut feeling or their own personal biases or whatever. So yeah, they're not. Required to reach a verdict based on facts, okay?、Uh, based on the evidence, they can just reach a verdict、uh, because they just feel that way. So yeah, they have no obligation. Here we've got the word obligation, which is a requirement, something you have to do.、Uh, if you're a parent, of course, you have the obligation to raise your children and take care of them and make sure they have enough to eat and they have a safe place to live and they go to school and stuff like that. These are Things you have to do. They are obligations. Yes, some of our obligations in life might be、uh, if you have brothers and sisters who are younger, you might have an obligation to watch after them or to look after them when your parents aren't home. Make sure they don't get into trouble or end up hurting themselves. You have an obligation if you're a student to do your best. You know, some people don't, but you do have that obligation, especially if your parents are paying your tuition. You have an obligation to them to do your best. So we have obligations in life. Just kind of you're morally bound to do something. It's a duty you have, a commitment. So here it says those who are against juries、um, say those jurors have no obligation to reach a verdict based on facts, although many of them really do try to, and they have personal biases, and that can lead to wrongful decisions. Again, a judge. Rules on things, not a jury, though. So, in fact, it says twelve percent of capital convictions; those are convictions、uh, where someone is convicted of killing someone or murdering someone. We're going to talk about that, guys, because、uh, we need a little bit more time, and we're just coming up to break time. We're going to listen to our Chinese teacher first, and then we'll be back. Hello, 大家好，我是哈利，欢迎收听 English Digest。我们今天要阅读的课程是 Unit Seven 第二天的文章。本日的课程将会探讨陪审团制度的优缺点。首先，我们看到第一段的第一句：陪审团制度的提倡者不仅强调其许多优点，并把有机会参与如此重要的法律程序视为一种特权。名词 virtue 在本句是优点、长处的意思，相当于 advantage。A D V A N T A G E， 或是 merit M E R I T。Preach the virtues of something 就是指宣扬什么的好处。例如 ，The nutritionist goes on lecture tours to preach the virtues of being a vegetarian。这名营养学家到处演讲，宣传当个素食者的好处。Virtue 还有美德的意思。The old woman considers thrift to be a virtue, so she saves most of the money she earns. 这位老太太认为节俭是美德，所以她所赚的钱大部分都存了起来。另外 ，by virtue of 是借由、因为的意思。例如 ，Susan made a lot of friends by virtue of her kindness. Susan 因为她的亲切而交了许多朋友。我们接着看到第一段第二句，说明陪审团制度的其中一个优点。They argue that having twelve jurors, each with a different perspective, 
reduces the chance of corruption and leads to a greater number of objective rulings. 他们主张拥有十二名陪审员，每位都有不同的观点，可以减少贿赂的机会，并导致更多的客观裁定。名词 perspective 是观点、看法的意思。要表示对什么的观点或看法，可以用 perspective on something。People's perspectives on beauty vary from culture to culture. 人们对美的观点因文化而异。若要表示一某人的观点，可以用 from the perspective of somebody， 或是 from somebody's perspective。我们来造一个句子。When it comes to the key to success, from my perspective, diligence is more important than talent. 提到成功的关键。依我之见，勤奋比天分更重要。要注意的是，这个字的拼法很容易和 perspective 混淆。perspective, p r o s p e c t i v e， 是指预期的，或是有可能成为什么的。例如 ，The manager will interview three prospective employees today. 这位经理今天会面试三位可能录用的应征者。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back, everybody. We're continuing to talk about juries, the pros and cons of juries. Are they good or are they bad? Okay, now we did talk about the fact that there are some faults to the jury system, some problems with it. And first of all, we talked about the fact that jurors don't have the obligation; they're not required to reach a verdict based on facts. And of course, we can have some personal biases that will lead. To、uh, incorrect decisions, and、uh, later, of course, we talked about the fact that 12% of capital convictions are later proven to be inaccurate. So, yeah, sometimes they're actually dead wrong.、Uh, <laughs> I don't mean a joke there. Yeah.、Uh, yes, we've got some capital convictions. Capital、uh, involves、uh, basically the death penalty, capital punishment. Right.、Uh, look at the word cap there. That means head. So the word capital, of course, does refer to The death penalty, capital punishment, as it's also called, and these convictions, or when the judge finds the defendant guilty, yeah, later on they're proven to be wrong. They convicted the wrong person, and、uh, the wrong person was put to death. Now, moreover, it says completing jury duty can be financially difficult for jurors. I talked about my experience. I was paid twelve dollars a day, but I lived in New York City. You're paid more because the cost of living is higher in New York City. But say someone lives in Louisiana or Mississippi, the cost of living is lower. So sometimes jurors only get four dollars a day, and Your company that you have to leave and、uh, you know for a while to serve on the jury, they don't have to pay you. I was doing freelance at the time, so I didn't make any money except that twelve dollars a day. Of course, I only had to do one day because they didn't want me. But、uh, companies again aren't required to pay employees to、um, who miss that work. For civic, their civic duty, financially just means related to your finances, the money that you make to pay for all your bills. It can be tough. So jurors, especially, suffer from the lack of an income when these trials last for extended periods of time. Yeah, sometimes they can last for months, so it can be really tough on a family if you're stuck on that jury for that long. Yeah, I'm from a small town, of course, and every once in a while somebody gets murdered, even in a small town. So these trials are in the news all the time, and yes, they drag on day after day as they talk to witnesses. So yes, if you have jury duty, or if you're a member of the jury, hey, you're busy with that for a long period of time. Now, here in the next sentence, it says, "Whereas a judge might deliver a verdict within a few days, sometimes juries take." 
take weeks to reach a collective decision, since they must continue their discussions until all twelve of them have reached an agreement, and they all have to agree, as far as I know. So here we've got this pattern. Whereas, okay, that means like, well, in the case of a judge,、uh, the judge might make a conviction or deliver a verdict. In a really short time. Well, on the other hand, we've got juries sometimes taking a long time, many weeks, to reach a collective decision. Now, here, collective means all together. They all have to agree on this. And if they got twelve people in there saying yes, he's guilty, punish him, put him to death. Maybe one person in there saying no,、nope, I don't agree. I don't think they presented the evidence. It's not convincing. I don't think the person. Is guilty of the crime. So yes, they have to debate and they have to persuade this person that this、uh, person is guilty. So they all have to reach this decision together. It's collective. Yeah, we'll often talk about a decision being collective decision because more than just a couple of people decided. It was a group. That was doing something, or maybe you share collective responsibility in your family for taking care of the housework, keeping the house clean, you know, doing the laundry, things like that. It's usually a collective responsibility by the family members. Well, moving on to the next paragraph, it says in Taiwan, the Thai administration. Uh, when you talk about a government's administration, and you put the president's name first or the prime minister's name first, just means all the people working with that person. They have argued. Notice we're using the singular verb has because administration is a collective noun. It's like family. The family is. The band is. Of course, if you were learning British English, this would be administration have because they use a plural verb there instead of. The singular verb, like Americans, so they've argued that unqualified citizens shouldn't be tasked or given such a critical job, a tough, important job. If you're unqualified, it probably means you don't have the education needed, or the experience, or the background. Um, if someone asked me to be their attorney or lawyer on a case, I would say I'm unqualified. I've never studied law. I wouldn't have the knowledge needed. So they're arguing that hey, some of these citizens that would sit on the jury, they just are unqualified. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah, they're just your average Joe or your average Jane, and they don't know much about the law and things like that. So yes, they've argued that、uh, unqualified citizens should not be given this task because it's critical, it's important. After all, you are dealing with justice here, and you don't want to have a miscarriage of justice. Still, with growing discontent over its current court process, President Tsai has responded with plans for the island to adopt. A lay judge system. So you've got lots of people out there complaining about the current court process. Yeah, we think that having just one judge or maybe two or three judges is not enough. There are a lot of decisions that judges are making that are unfair.、Uh, they're not sending the right person to jail, or they're punishing someone too much. So yeah, we want some change here. We want some reform. So Tsai has responded. She's got this plan. For a lay judge system, and here lay usually refers to just a common person in society, the layman or the lay person. Yeah, someone who's、uh, maybe unprofessional in a particular area. So this is the plan: they would adopt or、um, start using a lay judge system, and this would involve appointing six citizens to act as lay judges. Who help three professional judges? People have been trained in law, reach a verdict. So it looks like they'd have nine people working together to reach a verdict. I'm not sure how much persuasive powers the lay judges would have with the professional judges. The good thing about a jury system. Is they're all just citizens. Nobody has more power than someone else, so they have to kind of work together to come up with one 
Verdict. One decision. Okay, and going on here, it says it will be an unprecedented move for the nation, and also seems to mark a compromise between Taiwan's existing system and the jury trials many have been pushing for. So, if you say something is unprecedented, that means it hasn't happened before, it hasn't been done before, and that's often used in law. Whether there is precedent or not, you know, what did judges decide before? So we'll just、uh, go with that logic there. That's precedented, but unprecedented means hey, no one's done that before, so we don't know if this is the right decision. And also, this is a compromise. Okay, we've got the existing system that some people like, and the jury system that some people want. So yeah, this is kind of a compromise with this lay judge system. And there's kind of a cool phrase right there at the end, guys. If you're pushing for something, it just means you're really trying to get something done. You like it, you know. If you're pushing for change or you're pushing for more vacation time,、uh, it's something that you really want to have happen. You're not just sitting back and waiting for others to offer it. You're out there. You're proactive. You're trying to get something done. One of the phrases Tom used earlier that I wanted to mention too is that phrase "dead wrong." You can use it just in normal conversations. If you hear your friend say something and you know it's so wrong, you can just say that, "Oh, you're dead wrong," and you don't say something's dead wrong. You say that person, "You're dead wrong," and it's just it can be kind of fun if you use it with friends. Be careful though if you use it with.、Uh, You know, professional colleagues—they could be offended by that. You're dead wrong. Right now, guys, someone who's never dead wrong is our Chinese teacher. We're going to listen now. 第二段提到陪审团制度的缺点，其中一个就是每位陪审团成员一天的薪水可能少到只有四块钱，而且公司无需之薪，所以一旦案件的审判时间过长，某些陪审团成员在经济上就会有困难。我们看到第二段的最后一句，尽管法官可能会在几天之内做出判决，但有时陪审团则需要数周的时间才能得出共同的判决，因为他们必须持续进行讨论，直到他们全部十二个人都达成一致意见为止。连接词 whereas 用来连接两个文意成对比的句子，可以放在句首或是句中，有然而。但是的意思 ，one twin is very friendly and outgoing, whereas the other is shy and reserved. 那对双胞胎其中一个友善又外向，然而另一个则害羞又拘谨。另外，本句的最后有一个片语 reach an agreement， 表示达成一致意见的意思，也可以用 reach 或 arrive at a consensus， 表示达成共识。consensus。C O N S E N S U S. After ten minutes of discussion, the friends finally reached a consensus on where to eat. 经过十分钟的讨论，这群朋友对于吃饭的地点终于达成共识。文章的最后一段提到，台湾虽然不会采取陪审团制度，但有意采取业余法官制度 （lay judge system）。我们看到这一段的倒数第二句。这将涉及任命六位公民担任业余法官，他们将帮助三位专业法官做出裁决。动词 involve 后面接名词或 v i n g， 表示包括、需要的意思。International diplomacy involves conducting negotiations between nations。国际外交包括进行国与国之间的协商。以上就是今天的课程，谢谢大家收听。That's it for today's program, and、uh, hopefully we have presented this particular topic as objectively as we can, and hopefully the justice system will compromise between people who want the jury system and those who like the way things are. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.